Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. Today I want to answer a question from Echoness, who asks, Tim, which type of personality are you, introvert or extrovert? Even though people can be super talkative about their passion, they can still be an introvert from the inside out. I'm curious if you're introvert, how do you handle, how do you navigate your work that requires endless communication? Oh, Echoness, you have activated Tim Kaine story time. Because I have an answer for this, but it's a little long. So go get coffee if you need it. The short answer is, I'm both and I can switch back and forth. That's all you wanted to know? <laughs> Tap out now. Here's the long answer. So my parents were very different. My mom was an introvert, super smart, really smart. Um, my mom worked for the Judge Advocate General, JAG, high security clearance. My mom rarely made jokes, but I have four brothers and sisters, so all five of us, actually four and a half, um, all, all of us have my dad's sense of humor, which my mom would laugh at, but n rarely ever make a joke in that style. And so, of course, my dad was a huge extrovert. He worked in public relations at Western Union, so he was always the life of the party. He was very much, I described him to people as Ed McMahon. He was always going, oh, that was my dad. When I was really young, I was very introverted. I would go to school, loved school, would just study, do well in my classes, come home, spend the afternoon either by myself or with my brother who was two years older. In fourth grade, my mom got called in on a parent-teacher conference right at the beginning. And she was told that I had tested out of all the fourth grade material, all the fifth grade material, and I was well into the sixth grade material. And they wanted to jump me forward two years. My mom basically put a stop to that. And she said, I understand he can do the work, but He's already at the tail end of his class age-wise. I was born in late August, so if I had been born two weeks later, I would have been in third grade. I would have missed the cutoff, which is the beginning of September. I would have been in third grade instead of fourth. So she goes, he's already younger than everyone else in the class, fourth grade. Now you want to put him in a class of people who are two to three years older than him? I don't think he's socially ready for that. You know what? She was right. I'm glad she did that. However, the school, and I can't believe this was happening. This is back in the 70s. They pushed really hard for this, so my mom compromised. She said there were three classes, math, reading, and science that I could jump forward in. But I'd still be in fourth grade. Basically, I'd leave the room to go do those classes. The um, Interestingly, the... Uh, was it the, the reading class, I think, was in my brother's class. So I would literally go into my brother's classroom. And <laughs> yeah, I don't think he liked that. But that was interesting because, you know, it was, I was suddenly surrounded by kids who were 12 and I had just turned 10. And for the other classes, for reading, they didn't have a class but there were a few other kids who had tested out of reading. I think there was a total of six of us. So they would send us to the library and the librarian there would give us assignments. She'd have us read advanced books and do book reports. One week, we showed up on Monday and she put down the New York Times Sunday crossword puzzle in front of us. These are all 10 and 11 year olds and said, you can work on it as a group. You have all week, but you have to turn it in at the end of day Friday as complete as you can get it. We jumped on that. Uh, I was friends with a, a girl, she was Norwegian, Cotton. She coordinated everything. She wrote down all the clues, what the, how and how long the answers were in letters. She would assign them to us. We'd go jump, look in magazines, newspapers. We'd run around the library looking, at, looking up those clues. And as she learned letters, she would tell us, okay, these letters in your clue are known. 
And she was really good when she got answers. She'd check them. If they didn't fit, if they missed a letter, she'd say, no, this doesn't work. It's, it's a letter too long or these letters don't agree. And she'd look at the two clues and make the people who she had assigned to them go back and check. It was awesome. We finished it. Barely. I think we made it with like 20 minutes to spare on Friday. We turned it in. And I think the teacher was really, really surprised. For science, we ended up going to a special science class and it wasn't good. I loved science, but I'm not, I didn't really love that class. But it was interesting because I got a taste of what it was like to have to work in groups. I can't say that's what made my extroversion come out, but I had a teacher tell me that I seemed really good in groups and working with people and I won an award for civil something, civics, I don't remember, um, citizenship. That was it. Um, later, when I got older, my extrovert side did come out. When I got to high school and I started playing D&D, I was the one who usually DM'd. So I was the one who was coordinating the group and telling the stories and running the adventure. And then later, when I went to college, I had to do group projects because I was in engineering school and that just happened. Then when I went to grad school in the late 80s, early 90s, when you're in grad school, you have to be a teaching assistant, which means you're put in charge of classes. The very first year I got there, I was 21, living in California. Nobody, didn't know anybody, didn't have a relative living within a thousand miles. I was put in a 300 person introduction, introduction to computer science class. And after the first week, the teacher said, I need to go away for two weeks. You need to run the class. Gave me his notes. I ran this 300 person class for two weeks. Terrified at first, but it actually went pretty well. I mean, it's intro to computer science, and I think it was taught in basic. But it was, you know, an amphitheater with 300 people, and I had to get up and teach lessons. And that quickly burns any uh, stage fright or fear of talking right out of you. So by the time I got to Interplay, a few years later, running a project, not a big deal. I was prepared for that. So... Yes, when you run a project, you do have to be prepared to do a lot of talking. People, you need to tell people what you expect, what you want them to do. You're the one, more than anyone else on the project, who will convey the tone and feeling and vibe. Because people will do good work, but if it doesn't fit the tone or vibe of your game, you have to figure out a way of telling them, this is an excellent piece of code, this is a great idea for a feature, what a great piece of art you did. It doesn't fit in the game. And you have to learn how to do that. And it, it's hard. I'm, I'm not going to say I always did a great job at it, but I think I got a lot better as time went by. And I think I did better than some of the other project leaders I saw. Because it's hard to, especially when projects got bigger, when they went from, you know, it was me and four or five people to 10 and 12 to 30 to 100 to 200. Keeping that many people tasked and moving in the same direction and avoiding pitfalls and necessarily redoing work when needed, it takes a bit of conversational skill. So I think that was something that I got better at. But the thing I really like was, and this is what your question made me think of. So my sister, who's eight years older than me, was in college when I was in high school. And she had a psychology class and they gave these take home tests. And one of them was, are you an extrovert or an introvert? And it was a hundred question, hundred questions. And when you were done, you could have a score of anywhere from negative a hundred pure introvert to a hundred pure extrovert. I took the test. It's a long test. It took a whole afternoon to take. I scored a zero. <laughs> I remember my sister looked at it and went, Hmm. So we waited a few weeks and I took it again. And I scored a one. Now, this is on negative 100 to 100. The description for my personality trait was, you are just as comfortable going out to a party as you are staying home and reading a book. And I think that's a perfect description of my personality. For the last three years, I've pretty much been in isolation up in Seattle, except for a little bit of part-time work at a few clients. I spend most of the day not talking, you know, walking the dog, gardening, 
playing around with my game toys that I'm making in Unity and Unreal. And that's fine. I'm fine with that. Then I started doing this channel, which requires me to come up with topics. And every morning I sit down and talk to a camera like this. I'm fine with that. People say, hey, do you miss work? Mm, a little bit. I miss the people. Kind of miss the work a little bit. I don't miss the stress. I don't miss the pressures. Um, so I think that again just says I'm somewhere in the middle. I'm I'm not an introvert. I'm not an extrovert. I can switch it on and off. I can be my introverted mom. I can be my extroverted dad. That's just how it seems to work. So I hope this answered your question. I hope it explains a little bit of why I do this. But most of the day, I'm a very quiet, insular person. So there you go.